Hey guys, this is Mark, and uh, this is a message to the autistic spouses out there to help you make sense of this Cassandra syndrome business. Um, and by the way, uh, there are many NT husbands that experience Cassandra syndrome as well. So kind of the backstory on this, um, this is what I've run into over the years of working in this field with the autistic spouse and the NT spouse. <clears throat> we use the example of the NT wife and the autistic husband. Um, what goes on initially is he presents really well. The autistic husband presents well. Some people call that masking. He just wants to be liked and approved of, why wouldn't he? And so he provides his uh, NT partner, soon to be wife, with uh, a lot of affection and uh, attention and emotional reciprocity, give and take in conversation and so on. So then after the newness of the relationship kind of wears off, the autistic spouse will kind of gravitate back towards his special interests or work. And so she's kind of feeling left behind, like what happened, you know, we were connected and he's drifting away. And he doesn't even know he's drifting away, but she does. And uh, she is starting to feel uh, what I refer to as emotional, emotional deprivation. It's like, I'm not getting some of my needs met. I don't feel like I'm being listened to. I don't feel like I'm being understood. I don't feel like I'm being validated. And she can only go on like that for a few years <clears throat> before it starts affecting her mental health and her physical health. And that is the Cassandra syndrome business where if this goes on for decades, uh, she's depressed and she's starting to have some autoimmune disease and so on because uh, she has to have that emotional connection in order to be healthy. The autistic spouse gets his emotional needs met through his special interests and in work, especially if he enjoys his work and stays gone at work a lot. He's getting all his emotional needs met that way with non-social tasks, uh, and he can hyper-focus on those tasks for extended periods of time, and he's, he's getting his emotional needs met. But with the NT wife, she gets her primary uh, emotional needs met through social activities, especially through her spouse. So when she's not getting that, uh, she's losing because uh, one of her primary needs is not getting met. And then uh, she uh, will often tell people what's going on. Uh, let's say, for example, um, there are friends and family members that know the autistic spouse and the NT spouse, and they know both of them. And uh, let's say the autistic spouse name is Steve and her name is Ann. So people know both Steve and Ann, but they don't see what goes on behind closed doors. They don't see what Ann sees. Ann sees a man who does frequent shutdowns, meltdowns, adult temper tantrums, um, doesn't show much in the way of empathy, doesn't provide moral support when needed. But outside of the home, other people see uh, the two of them and they think that he's a nice guy. Like, I know him. He talks fine, walks fine, looks fine, works fine. I think Anne's being melodramatic because she's always complaining about him and I don't see it. He seems like a nice person. And so in this case, Anne is now in a double down position because the people that she talks to about what goes on behind closed doors, they kind of don't believe it. It's like, seems a little melodramatic. I don't think your husband is that bad of a guy. So now she's not only not getting her emotional needs met, but when she reports these things to other people, they don't really believe her. Until she gets in a community of other NT ladies suffering from Cassandra syndrome, and then they go, oh yeah, we know. We know exactly what's been going on. And so, yeah, I would encourage any NT wives watching this video to be sure and hook up with other ladies going through the same thing. Um, and on that note, I do have links below the video here uh, in the description area and in the comment section. And I have a Cassandra Syndrome recovery group and you'll be rubbing shoulders with other ladies that are in the same boat as you. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it for those of you um, autistic spouses who are not quite sure exactly what that means. Here's the summary. <clears throat> you presented well in the beginning. Uh, she thought she was on the right track. After a while, you gravitated toward your special interest and or work. She felt uh, emotionally neglected. It started affecting her mental health and her physical health. 
um, as she reported these things to other people, the, the huge disconnect between you and her, whenever she would mention this to some people who did not know anything about ASD level one, they didn't really believe her. They, they thought that she was kind of being melodramatic and exaggeratory. And so now she feels not only mentally and physically sick, but she feels isolated. That is a summary of Cassandra syndrome right there. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if your NT spouse, whether male or female, states that he or she feels like they're suffering from Cassandra syndrome, uh, it would be great if you could extend a little grace and mercy, not beat up on yourself. And oh man, I didn't realize I caused this and I must be a bad spouse. No, I'm, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is for help you to understand what went on and instead of spending energy beating up on yourself about it, spend that energy extending a little grace and mercy to your NT spouse. And uh, uh, listen to them, try to understand the hurt and validate that that's their experience and what can I do to help, okay? Here's your line. You ASD spouses, here, here's the line. Uh, I wanna listen to your hurt and I wanna understand it fully. And I wanna validate the fact that that's your truth and that has been your experience and I'm, I'm sorry that, that this turned out this way. What can I do to help? Okay, that's your assignment. Part of the assignment is not beating up on yourself, okay?